let's take a look at this video. You can see that's Mark Stein on the left and Tucker Carlson on the right. And uh, we can take a look at this. And um, I will interrupt. And, uh, you know, pay attention. Uh, pay attention to uh, the collectivism, to the uh, tribalism, to the nativism um, that Tucker Carlson expresses uh, throughout this. And we'll get to whether this implies racism as well, in spite of the fact that he's denied. Now, let me define racism. I'll define it now. I'll define it later. Uh, just so we're clear, uh, racism, Ayn Rand, Ayn Rand described racism as the most primitive barbaric form of collectivism. You know what she thought of collectivism. She thought collectivism was fundamentally immoral, uh, fundamentally antagonistic to uh, freedom, uh, to, uh, to liberty, uh, to, uh, to capitalism. Uh, she, uh, and she described racism as the lowest form of, uh, of collectivism, and I agree with her. I think it's, the, it's one of the most uh, immoral ideas that exist out there in the world today. What is racism? Racism is judging people based on their color of their skin or based on their ethnic background or based on their uh, origin, not based on their individual characteristics, not based on who and what they are, but based on some attribute that relates them to other people who have this attribute, an attribute that is insignificant to their character, attribute that's insignificant to their ability as an individual. It is the opposite of treating people as individuals. It's a form of collectivism, treating people as a group, not as individuals. And, uh, and uh, in this case, treating people as a group based on the least important characteristic of a group that is their genetic origin, color of skin, pro proxied for by color of skin. That is what racism is. Uh, that's what anybody who, who, who uh, bemoans, uh, uh, well, anyway, we're, we're going to get to that. So let's listen to Tucker. I have to put my headphones on so I can hear this. Not that it's fun to hear Tucker, but uh, here it is. Pressing the wrong button. There we go. Oh, that the left and all the little gatekeepers on Twitter become literally hysterical if you use the term replacement. If you suggest that the Democratic Party is trying to replace the current electorate, the voters now casting mm. ballots, with new people, more obedient voters from the third world. Now, let's start. What is replacement theory? Because he, he talks about a replacement and he talks about the fact that if you mention replacement, people are going to go apoplectic. And yes, they are. And yes, they should, because replacement is not just a word. It refers to a particular theory. It, to, it refers to a particular idea. It refers to the idea, first, I think, articulated in these terms by a French philosopher in the 1970s. It refers to the idea that whites, in this case, white Americans, have a very low both birth rate. Uh, and the white population, as a consequence, in the United States is shrinking. The native-born white population in the United States is shrinking because the birth rate is just below replacement. As a consequence, and in order to cause the white population in the United States to be a minority even faster, there is a conspiracy. Maybe it's by Democrats. Maybe it's by elites. Maybe it's by, I don't know, uh, 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 the Koch brothers, or, or maybe by George Soros, or maybe a combination of the Koch brothers and George Soros, but most likely by a Jewish cabal to bring in people who are non-white to replace, replace the white population. So the idea is whites... The white population in Europe and in, Israel, and in the United States is shrinking. We need a, a, a and, and in order to accelerate that trend, immigrants are being brought in from a variety of different non-white countries and replacing whites. And this is something 
that is scary. This is uh, affiliated with the idea of white genocide, which was quite popular on the right uh, just a few years ago. That terminology has disappeared, but was uh, quite prevalent uh, a few years ago. And the idea is that there is this massive class of civilizations, but really it's a massive clash of races, and uh, the white race is being replaced by non-whites. It's being replaced by non-whites within the country by the fact that blacks and Hispanics have higher birth rates than whites do. And it's being replaced externally by bringing people in through immigration. And it's being exacerbated by mixed marriages, which are offensive because they dilute whiteness, I guess. Replacement theory is a racist theory that identifies individuals based on their race, identifies groups based on their race, based on, in this case, the color of their skin, is clearly advocating for a particular race, whites, and is antagonistic towards those who have a different race, non-whites. It is clearly racist. It would argue, for example, for, for uh, immigration of whites only in order to maintain the white majority in America. The emphasis is not on, is all on color of skin. The emphasis is all on so-called race of the, the, the people involved. It categorizes people, not even based on their ideas, not based on their character, not based on their work ethic, but purely based on the color of their skin, and that makes it a racist, immoral ideology. And it's not just some benign ideology. Oh, yeah, okay, so some people have this. It's an ideology that is being uh, used or uh, you advocated for in the context of mass murder. I know of at least three cases of mass murder where the, uh, those who committed the mass murder argued and articulated the case from the perspective of replacement theory from the perspective of white people being replaced. Right? Whether it's the, it's the uh, massacre of Muslims in New Zealand, where he wrote a whole manifesto, where the main theme is this idea of replacement theory, and we need to fight it, and one of the ways to fight it is, of course, to kill those who are coming to replace us. Pittsburgh where uh, the guy uh, decided that the replacement was being guided, the replacement was being sponsored by uh, Jews who were the ones bringing these over the border, the, 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 the brown people over the border to replace whites, and therefore Jews had to suffer, and he went into a synagogue and killed, murdered a bunch of Jews. Shal uh, sorry, El Paso where, again, the manifesto of the gunman was filled with, uh, with the content of replacement theory, which had to do with whites being replaced by Mexicans crossing over the border by Hispanic immigrants, brown people replacing it. And he went into, a, uh, uh, went to, to, what was it, a Walmart and, and started shooting brown people. And, of course, Charlottesville. Charlottesville, in which white supremacists and other types of neo-Nazis walked around uh, chanting, you will not replace us, or as the chants evolved into and became the dominant chants, Jews will not replace us. So clearly, uh, replacement as a term refers to a, a particular theory, a theory that is animated, violence, a theory that is animated, uh, people who have gone forward and committed uh, horrific acts of violence against those that the theory claims are going to replace whites. It's not some benign theory. It's not some theoretical thing that Tucker can refer to. It's something that people are advocating. And, and if you go to 
Nick Fuentes' uh, website, you know, the America First Nick Fuentes, you will find him articulating exactly what replacement theory is. I mean, he chides uh, Tucker for not being strong enough in terms of his commitment to replacement theory. But it's exactly what it means. Tucker knows exactly what it means. He's using it here knowing what it means. And you'll see in a minute he tries to backtrack from it. But he knows. He knows. So he is basically articulating a theory he knows to be racist. On prime time, Fox News. Articulating as if it's nothing. Now we'll see, I'm going to replay what he just said, and we'll see how he spins it, and how he tries to convince us that he's not, this is not about race, this is about voting rights. And, and we'll get to a discussion of whether this is about voting rights. But look, replacement theory is a racist theory. He has just said that what's going on in the world today is about replacement. He's just basically sanctioned a theory that is one of the most vile, disgusting, racist theories out there. Now, he'll try to backtrack. It ain't working because even he knows it's all about race. That's what this is all about. Here we go. That the left and all the little gatekeepers on Twitter become literally hysterical. There's a reason why they become hysterical. If you use the term replacement, if you suggest that the Democratic Party is trying to replace the current electorate, the voters now casting mm. ballots, with new people, more obedient voters from the third world. Now, note, note um, how this is being positioned, right? This is about voting. So we're bringing in people... Now, he's spinning it about voting instead of about race, and that's going to be his argument. This is not about race, this is about voting. But he's using the terminology of the racists. He's using the terminology of the racists. But what is he claiming? He's claiming that the Democrats are bringing in voters who are going to be more obedient voters. And they've been doing this for the last 40 years. Now, first, uh, let's note that illegal immigrants don't vote in this country. They don't vote. And therefore, illegal immigrants crossing the border does not increase the number of voters for the Democratic Party. The fact is that illegals haven't been allowed to vote. They haven't been, there hasn't been amnesty since the 1980s. So for 35 years... There have been illegal, illegals coming in to the United States, but they can't vote. Now, it's true the Democrats would like to give them the vote, sure. And they're likely to vote Democratic because hey, Republicans uh, portray them as these horrific, monstrous, evil people. Of course, they're not going to vote Republican. Although, note that Trump got a, a good vote. Good number, good percentage of Hispanics voting for him. So first, the whole issue about this voting stuff is questionable because illegals don't vote. Children, by the way, don't vote. So all these children sneaking into the country, they don't vote, right? Illegal immigrants don't vote. Immigrants ultimately become citizens, and ultimately they can vote. Right? But even if you take that into account, the strategy seems to be pretty bad, right? So immigration, people complain about immigration laws. Lots of immigrants have been coming in over the last 40 years. Massive amounts of immigrants have come in. And yet the Republican Party has done phenomenally well over the last 40 years. If you think about post-World War II, or actually, if you think about since 1932, Democrats have dominated American politics. Even when Eisenhower was president, the House and Senate were Democratic. Indeed, it's been, it was rare until 19... really until the 1990s for the Republicans to have a presence in 
the House or the Senate. So Democrats, if you just look at their electoral po politics, Democrats have dominated electoral politics in the United States from 1932 until, I think, 1996. Since then, Republicans have become almost dominant. They've held the Senate and the House more frequently than Democrats. They hold government, uh, gov uh, state office holders, both Senates and House, more than Democrats. They hold governorships more than Democrats. Somehow Republicans have flourished in this era that was supposed to be their death. Demographics determine our fate. And if a demographics suggested that demographics suggest that Democrats should dominate, and yet it hasn't happened. Maybe that's because people don't vote their race. Now, it's a sad, sad situation to see the number of blacks who vote for the Democratic Party. It's just a sad to see the number of Jews who vote for the Democratic Party. And one has to ask a question of what is, the, what, what is going on? Why is that happening? But demographics don't determine the future. What determines the future are ideas. What determines the future are ideas, policies, philosophies. Not race. So if Republicans are worried, if Republicans are worried, then Republicans have to question their ideas or their marketing or their ability to convince. If Republicans claim they have some truth, then they should improve their ability to communicate. But uh, this isn't about <laughs> that. Republicans want to find a convenient excuse. And the convenient excuse that Republicans have found, the convenient excuse that Republicans have found is immigrants, racism, It's just untethered to reality. I'm hysterical because that's, that's what's happening, actually. Let's just say it. That's mm. true. Mm. If, if, look, mm. if this was happening in your house, if you were in sixth grade, for example, and without telling you, your, kid, your parents adopted a bunch of new siblings. The state is not your parent. Them brand new bikes. Other people in your country are not your siblings them stay up later and help them with their homework and gave them twice the allowance. Is that true? Or the illegal immigrants get twice the allowance of Americans? I mean, who gets more welfare? Immigrants or American citizens? Who gets more welfare? Immigrants or American citizens? Who gets more subsidies? Immigrants or American citizens? Well, I mean, it's not even close. It's not even close. By what standard? By what standard? By what standard? Um, immigrants, legal or illegal, getting better benefits, getting better treatment than American citizens. In what capacity? Where? Do American citizens pay more? Is there evidence of that? But the fact that you pay into a system, does that justify that you get steal more from that system? So your paying of taxes justifies you accessing the welfare state as much and advocating for it? Who, who voted in the welfare state? Was it immigrants? Maybe from Germany and France and, and Italy and Ireland. Who voted in the welfare system? Who voted in welfare? 
Immigrants? No, Americans. They voted themselves the ability to steal from some and redistribute it to others. Not immigrants. Immigrants didn't do that. The welfare state was not created by immigrants. It was not voted on by immigrants. It was voted on by Americans in the 1930s and the 1960s by European Americans. And the fact is, the, Brian Kaplan, the, the, the economist, has shown that immigrants pay more into the system that they get out as benefits. Even illegal immigrants get more, pay more into the system that take out as benefits. But uh, let's not confuse economic facts with storytelling. Because, uh, give me a break, it's not about economics. It never was about economics. This is about race. This is about whites fearing non-whites. Homer can give him twice the allowance that they gave Where's you. The twice the allowance? You would say to How your siblings, you know, I up? think we're being replaced by, by kids that our parents love more. So yes, yeah, so are we being replaced? So people are coming in, they're getting more goodies than we are getting, they're getting more stuff than we are getting. Really? Is that the actual reality out there? It's, it's completely made up, but it's told as like a story. And, and he doesn't have to give sources. He doesn't have to uh, uh, argue, make the claim. He doesn't have to support it with evidence. He just has to tell a story and we'll go, yeah, yeah, who wants those, those immigrants are getting all of our stuff? Are they? What about all the companies that are started by immigrants? What about all the entrepreneurs who are immigrants? What about all the jobs that they do that create wealth that we all benefit from? What about... What about all that? No, we can't talk about that. Don't confuse the issue. And it would be kind of hard to argue against you because look at the evidence. Where? What evidence? One piece of evidence. You haven't given us one piece of evidence. Look at the evidence. Where is it? So right. this matters on a bunch of different levels, but on the most basic level, it's a voting rights question. How is it a voting rights question? In a democracy, one person equals one vote. If you and, and immigrants are not one person? So immigrants are not one person. Immigrants are a collective. Your vote is being replaced by a group. In a democracy, one person equals one vote. If you change the population, you dilute the political power of the people who live there. Oh, my God. So if you have a kid, if you have children, you're diluting Tucker Carlson's vote. Because instead of being one vote out of 350 million, now it's one vote out of 350 and one million. So a growing population is a bad thing because it dilutes the natives. It dilutes the natives. So he is upset. Because he doesn't have as big of a vote. But the fact is that even with the natives, you know, his side doesn't always win. Change the population, you dilute the political power of the people who live there. Do you have a right not to have your vote diluted? Where does that come from? I mean, this is complete insanity. So increasing the population is bad because it dilutes Tucker Carlson's vote. And I, it's still true that you have one vote, one person. It's just now there are more people, Tucker. I mean, get your act together. You, you don't know what you're talking about. So every time they import a new voter... Import. Nobody imports people. We don't have slavery in America anymore. Every time a new immigrant, legal immigrant, by the way, legal immigrant because only legal immigrants ultimately can vote... Illegal immigrants don't vote. So every time illegal immigrants come into the United States, what happens? What happens? I become disenfranchised as a mm. current voter. So I don't mm. understand why we don't understand this. I mean, everyone wants to make a racial issue out of it. Ooh, the you know, white replacement theory. No, no, no. That's what uh, Nick Fuentes was very upset. Very upset. 
Why did Tucker have to say it's not about race when everybody knows, Nick Fuentes says, everybody knows that it's all about race. It's 100% about race. And of course, Tucker Carlson knows it's about race as well. But Nick Fuentes was very upset with Tucker Carlson. Why didn't he just leave it alone, not say anything about race? But now Tucker's trying to distance replacement theory from race. That doesn't work. This is a voting rights question. I have less political power because they're importing a brand new electorate. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's not a voting rights question. It is a political power question. That's what it's about. And in the end of the day, in a mixed economy, political power matters. In a mixed economy, the group that has power gets to allocate resources towards its people. In a mixed economy, in a democracy, which is what we've become, political power matters because you can violate people's rights to favor your group, your collective. The whole framing of the debate, the whole framing of the discussion is pure collectivism. It's all about your tribe versus mine. And it's all about, I want power so that I can benefit my people, be they race, be they people who vote with me. And I want to prevent you from having power so that you can't give goodies to your people. So I don't want immigrants who might vote against me. What about, what about this idea that the, that the white population, a much really troubled Tucker, is shrinking relative to blacks and Hispanics? What are you going to do about that? You know, uh, 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 subsidize uh, white babies? Penalize maybe? Babies that are not white? How, how are you going to deal with that, Tucker? There's a whole generation out there that might vote against you. What are you going to do about that? Why should I sit back and take that? The power that I have yeah. as an American guaranteed at birth is one. You don't have power guaranteed at birth. You don't have power other, over other people. That's not guaranteed for you at birth. All you get is one vote, one person. And indeed, if you think about the 19th century, and you think about how American voters were diluted in the 19th century. Oh, my God. The number of people coming into the country, legal immigrants coming into the country at that time, was much, much larger than today in terms of the percentage of our population. So Americans in the 19th century, their votes was, quote, diluted dramatically at the time. Imagine if we'd stopped immigration then. Where would we be today? I mean, this is so disgusting. Tucker is so disgusting. I mean, he plays, he's playing the collectivist game, the racist game that Ayn Rand warned us against. That the mixed economy was inevitably going to lead us towards more collectivism. More racism. Vote, and they're diluting it. No, they're not allowed to do that. What? Well, it turns out they are allowed to do that, and they are doing it whether Tucker Carlson likes it or not. <laughs> so uh, this is the consequence of the mixed economy. What we get are gangs, tribes, collectives that will go to any means to protect themselves. And as Ayn Rand pointed out, the most primitive form, the most primitive form of all collectivism is racism, and it has to deteriorate into racism. We're seeing that on the left with critical race theory, with the emphasis on skin color, with the emphasis on so-called multiculturalism. And we're seeing it on the right with this fear of replacement, fear of people with darker skin than you have.
We're seeing racism become the dominant factor, the dominant factor in American politics today, both on the right and on the left. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at yourownbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs> 